Welcome to our YouTube channel, the Whiskey Travel and Tales Manufactory. My name is Bernie Gator and this three in a row episode is about three whiskies made by my favorite distillery. This is my Kilhoman episode. In the year 2005, two completely separate events happened that would, very differently, yet significantly, have an impact on my life. First of all, the love of my life, my daughter was born. And secondly, and this is what is on stake in this episode, Kilhoman Distillery went to work and would fill their first barrel in December of the same year. Ich bin hier im Lagerhaus. Das ist das erste Fass, das die jemals abgefüllt haben. But more on that later. Kilhoman Distillery is located in Scotland, to be precisely on an island in the Hebrides named Isla, the Queen of the Hebrides. Being a true Bernie Gator, I of course always saw a gator's head in its shape. Right? Right? And if you will, its eye is Loch Gorm, after which one of Kilhoman's whiskies is being named, and which is really close to the distillery. Vlog 11, by the way, is all about that whiskey in particular. I kinda ran into the distillery on my first visit on Isla. I saw the sign while I explored the island and was driving along Loch Gorm. I did remember to have read there is a new distillery on Isla, but at the time I hadn't realized that they were open already. There was a five pound offering to taste three of their whiskies, and so I did. Two of them were barely whiskey being three years old and one was four years old. My expectations kept within reasonable bounds, so to say. But that all changed in seconds when I tasted. The first whiskey was a three-year-old 100% Isla. And for a three-year-old, I instantly knew that I had something special in my glass. Second one was a three-year-old Loch Gorm that vaporized all of my doubts and that I ordered online at Amazon's on my way out cause the third one was a four-year-old Madeira cask matured expression that is only available at the distillery in the distillery shop and that I luckily enough did purchase. Now we talked about Loch Gorm in vlog 11 and so for the purpose of this episode in three in a row I bring in one more of Kilhoman's core whiskies called Zanag, which is out of their lower priced segment, which makes it one of my favorite go-to whiskies that I always like, that I always recommend and once in a while even use as a gift for one of my buddies. Now to understand Kilhoman whiskies, you need to know their history and you need to understand their philosophy which could be reduced to we know how to make whiskey so everyone else stay out of our business. Kilhoman is the only one out of nine active distilleries on the island to not sit right on the shore and was the first newly built distillery in 124 years. But within the last 124 years, shipping as a number one way of transporting whiskey lost its importance. Even on Isla, a truck comes to the distillery. Anthony Wills bought Rockside Farm along its on-site water source, because in his vision of how whiskey is supposed to be made, the first step is to grow the barley. And if he tells the story of what major undertake it was, especially as an independent distiller, to make it all come true, one can understand why no one else did try to do it in the last 124 years. But neither inaccurately dimensioned tubes, nor a direct drying system that would directly not dry the grain, or even a blazing fire that totaled the pagodas, which all in all led to costs of half a million pounds he had not raised or calculated, None of it would stop Anthony Wills. Eventually, his vision from barley to bottle would come to work. 
and he managed to stay small enough to run Kilhome in sort of a family business, yet independently from all those major corporations and trusts known in the industry, each and every decision still firmly in hand. So here we are at the hollow halls of Kilhoman. I'm so happy to be here, I could pee in my pants. Actually that could happen if I don't go to pee before the tour. So I gotta go. The tour starts in the obligatory visitor center, which by the way doesn't look like that anymore. At all. Kilhoman expanded, reconstructed and built a brand new one that was opened in February 2002, only to close down a few days later. I've seen pictures though and it looks fantastic. I can't wait to enjoy a dram there with Mr. Smith. Our last tour in 2018 started with a dram of 100% Isla. And there really is no better way to start, cause this whiskey stands for everything Kilhoman is, more than any of their other ones. Cause even though the size of their farmland for growing barley may seem massive, its harvest does not cover their need for barley by far. But it does cover the requirements for the 100% Isla, hence the name. And even for blending experiments with the malt of all their other expressions that they purchase from Port Allen Maltings down the street. With the same specs, our bag orders them all there, by the way. Peed it, 50 ppm. Their own barley then is being soaked with water to get it to germinate and then dry it for 36 hours. First with peat fire, a solid fuel that's been used for centuries on Isla and provides the typical smoke flavor by blending with the barley at about 20 parts per million. Then it's being dried down to about 5% moisture by hot air. It now has the perfect consistence to not be crushed, but cracked open by this old mill here. Pretty much every distillery in Scotland owns a mill made by one of two brands. It's either a Robert Bobby mill, or in this case at Kilhomans, it's a Porteous. Both mills are known to be unbreakable, and in fact, no matter how many tons of barley you throw at them, they keep running year after year, decade after decade, needing almost no maintenance. That eventually broke both companies in the 1970s, cause the market was saturated. They don't make them like that anymore, say the old folks. True that, moving on. This is the mash tun, where within three cycles, the sugars are being washed out of the now so-called grist. The washed out leftovers are an excellent feed and is either being used for their own animals or sold to other farmers. Fermentation takes place in the wash bags, where living yeast cells are added that feed on the sugars and turn them into alcohol. This process takes, as we already know, at least 48 hours and Kilhoman even pushes it to 80 hours which is of vital importance for the development of lactic bacteria and ester molecules, supplying fruity notes to the spirit. But we will consult our spiritual engineer Andreas Heiss on this in the foreseeable future to take a closer look on that matter. Es ist unfassbar, ich bin hier ganz alleine im Brennraum von Kilhoman. Ich kann nicht glauben, dass sie mich das machen lassen. Ich spitze mir den Arsch weg. Das im Hintergrund ist die Brennblase von Kilhoman, die Wash Still. Blödsinn, das ist die Spirit Still. Darum haben sie es auch hingeschrieben. Und das ist die Wash Still. Das ist die Wash Still. 
Not so easy with the rear view mirror, and I was way younger and very inexperienced too. Everything about Kilhoman is very small, and it was about time they expanded in 2018. A spirit still like that, with a 2000 liter capacity, almost could fit into my studio, which, by the way, focus, Bernie, focus. On the other hand, the rising alcoholic vapors do have way more contact with the copper, which is even increased by the spherical middle part called a Milton ball. A chemical reaction with the copper reduces the off flavors in the spirit, and only the lightest molecules make it all the way into the condenser, which all in all results in an almost flawless spirit with fruity aromas. Kilhoman pretty much doubled up since 2018. Another set of washbacks, mash tons, and even a new still house with two stills were added. They now have the opportunity to separate the spirit made with their own malt for the 100% Isla into a dedicated low wines and faints receiver, which makes it a lot easier to produce using two kinds of malt, as well as making room for experiments. And last but not least, they can mature longer, because now production easily covers the necessary output. There in the background you see the vetting tanks. This is where they mash up the whiskies from the different uh, from the different casks. Well, but before that comes the most important step, maturation. Most of the casks Kilhoman uses are first fill bourbon casks made by Buffalo Trace and Oloroso Sherry casks. But there are a lot of trials and tests too. They needed to find out which type of cask would harmonize with their new make, how long is the perfect amount of time and how long is too long. Senaig and the Madeira cask expression are results of those experiments. There actually is a huge variety of wine casks being tested. And just like all other of Kilhoman's core whiskies, they do not have an age statement. Which is something I actually realized while working on this episode. And Kilhoman does not sell to the blended industry. Three shifts, five days a week, is the usual schedule, and they produce close to 500,000 liters alcohol a year. As compared to their neighbor Bruchladi triples that. And McAllen even produces 30 times more. And with that, we are back to the cask number one, made in 2005. Which brings us to this bottle here. In the meanwhile, Kilhoman whiskies reached adulthood, and in the last couple of years, they released several limited editions with an age statement. This one here is the first 10 year old whiskey they ever released. Limited, like 900 bottles. Pretty tough to get your hands on, but I just had to. Because this whiskey contains whiskey from 2005. Not from cask number one, but still whiskey from 2005. The year my wonderful daughter was born, which closes the circle and kind of explains my very special relationship with Kilhoman, I guess. This whiskey is gonna be a birthday present for her one day. Well, this ends my Kilhoman story and this very personal episode. In the meanwhile, we reached more than 600 subscribers, which is awesome, thank you so much. Please stay healthy, please keep on recommending our channel, as I recommend myself as your Bernie Gator.
This channel is a sheer passion project and we hope to share it with everyone who's interested. So in case you know someone who would enjoy our content, please recommend us. For hardcore fans and newbies who want to binge watch all our videos chronologically, here's the playlist Vlogs in English. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel and don't forget to hit the little bell to get notified if there's a new video. It's all free and you really do help us to be found easier. Thank you and Slungy.